Yeah, th there's no way I'm staying up here, guys. I can't do it. You knew this was going to happen? What was going to happen? That it I can't do it. I just, I can't do it. What am I, Ben Franklin? I mean, I, I, I want to share with you this scripture that God's showing me this morning. It's, if you want to turn to 2 Corinthians, I'll be ready in a second. <laughs> I can preach at a poll. I'm good. The poll might listen better. <laughs> oh, that was messed up. <laughs> I said that for you, Jared. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Second uh, Corinthians chapter four. I want I want to talk about some things that I believe God's God's highlighting, especially over the past few weeks with me. Uh, I'm, and I, I got to believe that it's something He's highlighting with everybody else too. Second Corinthians. Um, Paul was writing to the church at Corinth. If you, read, if you read the scriptures, it says that he was writing to the Corinthians, he was writing to Christians, those that would, that would read that later on. Uh, this, is the, this is actually one of four letters that Paul actually wrote to the Corinthians. Depending on the theology or the, the theologian that you look at and how they broke it down, there was four letters that were written to the church at Corinth. Some believe one was the first one and three were the second one, two, it, do, it doesn't matter. Paul was addressing some issues is what was happening here. And he was speaking to the church at Corinth. He was speaking to believers. And he was sharing out of his own heart. He was sharing out of his own experience. How many of you can truly understand that if you're going to lead somebody, if you're going to teach somebody, man, you need to teach out of your own experience. You need to teach out of who you are. Not out of somebody else, man. I mean, a lot of times we do that. We sit out <clears throat> and we watch, you know, uh, church on TV or we go into a service somewhere and we say, I got to be able to speak like that guy before I can speak to anybody. Man, don't do that. Don't rob somebody of what you've got in you. God puts something in you. Like before you were born, there's something in you. There's something that he packed inside of you that he wants to grow in you to bring it out at the right time. When's that right time? When you're ready. When you're ready to let go. Here we go, back to the Frozen song again. That's two weeks in a row. Imagine that. There's going to be a theme in that somewhere. But Paul was addressing some issues at the beginning of the... See, the, the church in Corinth, they were a young church. They were growing, you know? They had gone through some stuff, man. They had come out of polytheism, which means that they believed in multiple gods. You know, they, they, they prayed to a god of this one, they prayed to a god of that one, and then they also prayed to the god. But Paul walked in there and he set some things straight. If you read through the book of Acts, he had a few trips to Corinth, and he spoke to them and he shared the gospel with them, and many were converted, many, all kinds of signs and wonders, healings and all kinds of stuff like that. Paul was addressing some stuff here in 2 Corinthians 4, but he was addressing out of his heart. And he was sharing some things that, man, they hit me so hard when I read them this morning. I'm like, good Lord. I was up a quarter of five this morning. You know those times when God just wakes you up and you're like, bing? And I'm like, oh, come on, man. It's really? <laughs> so I did the whole, I'm going to go back to sleep because it's still early. I stared at the ceiling for about 15 minutes. Finally said, okay, fine, God. I guess now's the time. What a jerk. <laughs> and then the dog kept bothering me through my quiet time. Anyway, so I sat there with God for a couple hours this morning, and he just began to take me through what Paul said here. It's in 2 Corinthians 4, and it's down in verse 13. He was talking to them about his own experience, his own heart. And he said, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Now I'm going to stop there for a second because that was the first thing that God jumped on. I got the privilege of having dinner with Mike and Robin last night with my wife. 
And it's one of the things I said at the table that God's been messing with me on is what I'm speaking. So when I read that this morning, I said, okay, God, I get it. Again, because I didn't get it the first 12 times. And I read this, and I started studying it out a little bit. And what Paul's speaking about here when he says, and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, which means it was written before, because how many of you know that Paul didn't have the Bible? He had the Old Testament, but it was Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Paul was speaking through the Spirit. He said, how do you know? He said, according to what is written, I have believed and therefore I spoke. So I dug in to find out where that was written before. You don't have to turn there, but it's actually in Psalms 116. In Psalms 116, I'm going to read this because this is the Passion Translation. David wrote this psalm. David's been through some stuff. How many of you know that David went through a whole ton of crap in his life? Like a lot. Had people trying to kill him just because he was being who he was. You know, I mean, he made mistakes too. But he went through a whole bunch of stuff. But David had a word over his life that he would be king. And he put stock in that word. And he believed that word. So David, when he wrote this psalm, he was thinking about all the stuff that he had gone through. And he, it, says, it reads like this, I am passionately in love with God because he listens to me. How many of you know he actually hears you when you cry out? And that drove David to a place that he understood that so much that it made him passionately in love with who God is. Come on, that's the place we belong. <laughs> it said, he hears my prayers and answers them. As long as I live, I keep, I'll keep praying to him. For he stoops down to listen to my heart's cry. Death once stared at me in the face. And I was close to slipping into its dark shadows. I was terrified and overcome with sorrow. I cried out to the Lord, God, come, save me. And he was so kind, so gracious to me because of his passion toward me. He made everything right and he restored me. Did you see that? Because of his passion towards us. Do you know he's passionate about you? Like his heart is fixed on you. Like you are laser locked in the target of God. And he looks down on you every single day. And he's your biggest cheerleader. Because he sees the destiny that he put in you. And he knows what you're facing. And he's going to say the same thing to you that he's been saying to me for years. And he'll continue to say for years, stay with me. Don't lag behind. Don't get in front. Stay with me. David learned that through the stuff that he faced. He continued on. It says, so I've learned from my experience that God protects the childlike and humble ones. For I was broken and brought low, but he answered me and came to my rescue. Now I can say to myself and to all, relax and rest. Be confident and serene. For the Lord rewards fully those who simply trust in him. Amen. Come on. I, I don't need to speak this one out. It's, it's self-explanatory. Uh, it says, God has rescued my soul from death's fear and dried my eyes of many tears. He kept my feet firmly on his path and strengthened me so that I might see, so that I may please him and live my life before him in his life-giving light. Now listen to this next line. It says, even when it seems I'm surrounded by many liars and many fears. How many know that there's many liars surrounding us every single day? And those liars are always attached to a spirit of fear that's trying to latch onto you. And they'll continue to tell you you're not going to get through this. They'll continue to tell you that all those promises you have from God are garbage. They'll continue to speak at you and speak at you and speak at you like in that storm. 
until you stand up and say, "Uh uh-uh, this is what God said. And I'm going to stand on that. He continued on. He says, there are many liars and, and my own fears. And though I'm hurting in my suffering and trauma, I still stay faithful to God and speak words of faith. That's the scripture that Paul was referencing in Corinth. I will still stay faithful to God and speak words of faith. Paul said, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. Man, what are you speaking? This is what God's dealing with me with, guys. If all the stuff that you're facing day in and day out, you're getting the same result, you've got to do something different. You have to. If you're on Facebook or, or Instagram or Twitter just saying how much life sucks, guess what? Life's going to suck. That's, that's, you're going to get what you're expecting. This is, this is a big piece that he's, he's putting in me this year more than anything else is you've got to begin expecting me to crash in and meet you right where you are. But if all you're going to do is speak the negative and all that other kind of stuff, then it just shows that you don't believe me. <coughs> Scripture says, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what you're speaking shows what you truly believe. The stuff that you're facing every day and the, the, the negative stuff that we're spitting out constantly shows what your heart actually believes. Man, it got quiet in here when I said that one. This is not a, a, a condemnation word. This is a we're called to much more word. You know, he's calling us up higher. It's, it's like when he looked down at John and he said, John, come up here higher. I want to show you some stuff. We got to look at things from a new perspective. Man, for years we have done things, not only in our families, we've done things in the church. We've done things personally that, because it's just how we always did them. So we expect them to be the same when we do things the same. But what happens when you do that is you limit God. You know? We've had church revivals. We've had all kinds of stuff like that. And we followed a certain pattern to get there. Guess what? Follow that pattern right now. See what happens. It's not going to work. Because God's not there anymore. He's doing something different. It's that whole, behold, I do a new thing. And to do that new thing, it requires relationship. It requires you to stay with him one-on-one and stay side-by-side with him and hear what he's saying in the moment and step into that thing. Then you watch heaven invade earth. He's calling us to a new level of belief, guys. A new level of understanding. And you've got to partner with that. I have to partner with that. I can't just say, okay, God, you do it. I'm, I'm good. I, I'm happy about that. You're doing a new thing, so do your thing. Uh-uh. This requires you to partner with it. It requires me to partner with it. It requires me to start looking at my stances, my circumstances, and understanding who my father is in those circumstances rather than understanding the crap. It requires me to walk into the middle of the situation that I'm in, understanding who I am, and regardless of what's in there, it can't get on me because of who he is. Greater levels, greater devils. Come on, guys. We've said that for years, too. How about I'm a son or I'm a daughter of the king? And I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And when I speak those words of the devils under my feet, it's not just a punchline because that's what I learned in church for years. It's more understanding of who I am and that because of who I am, I can walk new. I can walk free. I can walk in this thing and understand that I am here to change this situation. If you're in a situation right now, you're there to be a change. You're there to be the change. Right? You're there to shift the atmosphere. 
How do you do that? That's between you and God. That's between you and him to say, okay, God, if I'm here and you want to change some things here, you're going to have to show me how to do this. Yeah, welcome to the conversation. That's all he wants right from the beginning. That's all he wants. And then you can sit in that moment, and even if you only hear a little bit and you're not really sure, you step into it and you trust what he's saying. And you watch him invade the situation. Faith requires risk, guys. It requires us to say, okay, God, I'm not sure if I'm actually hearing you or not, but I'm trying, so I'm going to walk this thing out. Man, God will meet that right in the middle of it. Even if you missed him wrong, he's still going to meet you because he's that gracious. Hmm. Paul said, I believed and therefore I spoke. David wrote that. Paul said, we also believe and therefore we speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. There was something inside Paul that understood who God was. And this is what he was trying to get out on the Corinthians. Guys, understand who you are. This is, this is God. He actually said throughout Scripture that you have the same resurrection power inside of you that raised Christ from the dead. The Greek word dunamis. It's where that word dynamite comes from. It's the same word that was used in the upper room when they were in one accord and the Holy Spirit dropped. Hmm. He said, for all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. This morning he said to me, oh boy, if I can say it without getting messed up. He said, thankfulness, Tom. Thankfulness paints the landing zone for the presence of God. Come on, guys. We're going into Thanksgiving here. If you continue to read that Psalm of David, let me read the rest of it. He said, so now, what can I ever give back to God to repay him for the blessing he's poured out on me? I will lift up his cup of salvation and praise him extravagantly for all that he's done for me. I will fulfill the promise I made to God in the presence of the, all the gathered people. When one of the God's holy lovers dies, it is costly to the Lord, touching his heart. Lord, because I am your loving servant, you have broken open my life and freed me from my chains. Now I will worship you passionately and I will bring to you my sacrifice of praise drenched with thanksgiving. Sacrifice of praise, drenched with thanksgiving. I just love how we wrote that. Sometimes it can be a sacrifice to praise in the middle of your circumstance. It requires you to take what's hurting you and, and what's holding you down and drop it on the altar. <laughs> you know, as a, as a paramedic for, I don't know how many years, I can't tell you how many times I've had patients that are, are in some severe kind of trauma or some severe type of incident where we actually have to call a med flight and get the helicopter there. I, I don't know, I don't remember how many times I've done that. It's been quite a few but one of the things that you have to do in order to have that helicopter land is you have to have a, a landing zone. You have to set up a full landing zone. There has to be a full open area, whether it's a field, a ball field, or a large parking lot or something like that. You have to have a fire truck in place with a hose line pulled off the fire truck that's charged and ready to go. If it's at night, you have to have full lighting set up 
in that area so the helicopter can land right in that right spot. If you look at some of the hospitals, they have a landing zone that's already set. The ground is all painted. It's all ready to go. They understand exactly where to go. He said to me this morning, Tom, thankfulness is that landing zone for the presence of God. We don't think of thankfulness when we're in the middle of a mess. David sat here and said, I've been through all of this stuff. And what it's done is it's pushed me closer and closer to you. So I will give you my sacrifice of praise and I will drench it at Thanksgiving. And in that place, the glory of God will land on it. And it shifted David in such a way that he could never go back to who he was. Come on, that moved God's heart. God named his own son the son of David. How does a man win that place with God? <laughs> David said, I'll worship you passionately and bring to you my sacrifice of praise, drenched with thanksgiving. How many of you have ever heard of the, the, uh, the, the theory of cause and effect? Right? So cause is the action or the event that makes something else happen. That's the effect. So you do something, and because you do something, this happens. It's where we are, guys. But how many of you know cause and effect means you don't walk into this event because it's going to cause this. You just walk in it because it's who you are. Paul said, I believe, therefore I spoke. He believed first. I believe that God wants to open a new level of understanding and a new level of belief in every single one of us. I believe that he wants to open our eyes to see that there are circumstances that we're facing or certain things that he's calling us to, even certain visions that you have that he wants to fulfill. And the only way he's going to actually begin to fill them is when we decide we're going to believe it. When we're going to look beyond our circumstances or when we're going to look beyond the issues that we're facing and we're going to say, God, yes, you said it, I'm going to believe it regardless of what's going on around me. And I'm going to walk in such a way that I'm going to speak this thing out because there is power in your words, guys. You get what you speak. If all you're saying is, God, I'm broke, and next week I'm going to be broke, and the following week I'm going to be broke, guess what you're going to be? It's not rocket science. But you begin speaking the promises of God that are over your life. And if you don't have a prophetic word, I'm sure you hang around here long enough, you'll get one. But at the same time, your Bible is full of promises. Don't rely on a guy to give you a word. I mean, he'll bring in a word at times when he wants to, but you've got to rely on his word. What is he saying in the moment? Paul didn't have the Bible at that point. He had Holy Spirit. So what did he have to do? He had to have relationship. And he had to have Holy Spirit land on what he did have, which was the Old Testament. Thankfully, it wasn't in the book of Leviticus. Alan and Lois are the only ones that got that. <laughs> Look, I, I honestly believe that what he's trying to do here is open up a new level of understanding and a new level of faith in us. He's trying to put a, this, this new level of, uh, of being able to trust him in the middle of the circumstance. Guy, I'm facing some stuff personally right now that I'm like, God, really? All this at once. I, I mean, if it was one thing, uh, uh, all right, we'll walk through this one together. But uh, there's like 19 things on the phone right now, and I'm like, geez, what is happening right now? This is ridiculous. And I, he constantly comes back with that same line, stay with me. Stay with me. Don't lag behind. Don't get ahead. Just stay right here. Stay right here. And he's bringing us to a place where we can look at what he has already done. 
And we've got to take that into the circumstance you're at. This is why David did what he did. This is why he spoke what he spoke. He took his history with him. Not the bad stuff, the good stuff. Don't take what somebody else spoke over you. You take what God spoke over you. That's important, guys. It's what God said, not what anybody else said. Don't you let people put words on you that don't belong. And don't you think that just because somebody holds a title, a pastor, or a minister, or whatever else, that everything they say is gospel truth. I'm telling you right now, don't take everything I say as gospel truth. I love you guys, and I'll give you my heart, but I can be wrong. I'll tell you if I'm wrong. Maybe not that week if I don't realize it. <laughs> but I'll come back the following week and say, guys, I missed this one. M- miss- Listen, I- my heart is to get you to him. And-, and he'll reveal what's truth. You know what I mean? Because if you're reliant upon somebody here, we've got problems. They didn't have this in the Bible. They did, but it was mostly the religious people that had it. That's why Jesus was on the street. Hmm. That thankfulness, guys, and being able to look at what he's done and being able to look at the circumstance and hear his promise in the middle of the thing and thank him before it even happens, that creates the landing zone for the presence of God to land in there. You know? We have a lot to be thankful for this just not even just this year, just in general. We're gonna take uh, we're gonna take communion this morning. Um, let me get Al and somebody else with Al, Randy, whoever, John. Yeah, there you go. All right. So if you'll hang on, we'll take it together. It's awesome that we have the, the holiday to remind us of being thankful, but how much more if you can just realize that every day? You wake up in the morning, God, thanks, I woke up. You know what I mean? Oh, thank God that I messed up yesterday, but your mercies are new every single day. You know? That's, that's the mindset, it's the shift. Would you, would you close your eyes for a minute?
I just, I, I feel like God just told me, listen. We're going to do, we're going to do this together, communion together. But I feel like God said, I want to deal with an issue quickly before. It's funny because there are issues that God deals with over a long time and there are issues that he deals with quickly and I feel like he said I want to deal with this one quickly before we take communion God's going to highlight somebody in your heart right now that you need to forgive He's going to highlight somebody inside you that you need to forgive don't question it I, I know you probably feel, because I can hear this one in my heart, you probably feel like you dealt with that already. But if God's highlighting it, there's a reason. So whoever he just highlighted you, just quietly to yourself. Just forgive that person and release them. There's so much more than just forgiving. you got to release them. Because when you release them, it releases you. Put yourself in that upper room with your eyes closed. Put yourself there. It's the night before Jesus was about to give himself. And it says that it was the joy that was set before him. You and I, we're that joy that he willingly gave himself. I said, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So he took that bread and he, he tore it and he passed it and he said, take this. This is my body that's broken for you. So Father, we receive that right now and we thank you for it. took the cup and he passed it he said this is the blood of my new covenant don't take this cup like you've taken this before it was his actual blood that was spilled out make us fully clean it's the blood that still lays on the altar today and cries out mercy to the Father it still cries out today he said drink this cup as it's poured out for you Father, we thank you, God. Father, we just worship you even right now, God. Father, we put praise on our lips, Father. Just begin to praise him right where you are. Just begin to thank him right where you are for all that he has done and all that he continues to do. Man, this can't be about just what somebody up here speaks. It's got to come from your heart. Ah. That thankfulness that will create the landing pad for the very presence of God. So, Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, Father, for your Son.
thanksgiving to remind us of stuff like this but it does sometimes so I want to take a minute and thank some of the people that don't get recognition very often like our ladies that are always working with the kids Kristen, Tammy Shai Tiana, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of them I'm probably missing somebody, please don't get offended if I missed you 
like the worship team that spends all kinds of time working, you know, and had a crazy week. The computer people that work back there under Robin, <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> That's life with Robin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for my old lady for putting up with me. I hope you all have a good week. Obviously, Thanksgiving night we won't be here, but we'll, we'll be together in, in spirit. So Father, we bless your name, God. We thank you for just, just a, a crazy week, God. And he, yeah, I, I actually heard this a few minutes ago. Get your notebooks out. Get your notebooks out in the night season, because I believe he's gonna start releasing visions and dreams on the overnights. Like it's gonna begin waking you up. And if you've got a notebook and a pen ready, you're ready to steward what he's given you. Put that next to your bed and watch what he does. Don't worry about trying to figure it out. We'll work that out later. But as he starts releasing, if he knows you're gonna steward what he's given you, he'll give you more. <laughs> so Father, we thank you, God. We do have sharing a blessing on Sunday, so for all our sharing a blessing peeps, um, we'll see you then. Otherwise, have a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you next week.